A peaceful dialogue between a Hindu and a Muslim part 3. Question 17, Hindu, did you know that the Hindu religion says that society is divided into four different classes? What is the view of Islam in this? Answer 17, Muslim, yes, I know. Here is its detail. The Hindu religion divides society into four varying ranks. The highest one is called the Brahman and the least is, Chaudhry. The latter are foul disregarded people who are only created for the service of the upper classes. Hinduism claims the existence of human beings who are created from the head of God, the class of Brahmins, they are the scholars and wise men. Some are created from his hands, the catcher, the soldiers who protect the country and its system. Some are created from his thighs, the classes of Walsh who run business and industry, and others who are created from his feet, Chaudhry. Each of them has his degree and status in the society. Therefore, there must be the difference between them in treatment, marriage and so on. For example, while the first three classes are allowed to marry each other, they are not allowed to wed the fourth ones. Also, the fourth ones are not allowed to marry those who are higher than them. Before I shed light on the view of Islam in that, I will basically explain. Firstly, it is known that stratification and discrimination between individuals and groups is an outcast which leads to the spread of hatred and distasting among different groups of society and thus it leads to the division, disintegration and instability of society. Thus, Islam came to eliminate these class differences in societies between individuals and groups, and then spread good, virtue in maintaining the cohesion and stability of society. Islam has shown that there is no distinction between any of the human races and there is no difference between a country and others and a nation and others. Everyone is equal in the sight of Almighty Allah because He is the one who created them and no preference for the individual over the other with Allah except by faith. Piety and good deeds which include the good reconstruction of the earth and not its destruction. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, there is no preference for an Arab on non-Arab and vice versa. Also, a white person is not better than a black one and vice versa except by piety. People are from Adam and he is from the soil. It is reported by Ahmad. Islam came to call for the unification of nations and peoples, as God says, O mankind, indeed we have created you from male and female and made you peoples and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the noblest of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous of you. Indeed, Allah is all-knowing and acquainted. Surat al-Hujarat, verse 13. Secondly, it is clear that there is a large difference between the stratification occurring in the other societies and the one occurring according to the Hindu religion. Where the discrimination of other societies can be dealt with, removed and eliminated. Whereas according to the Hindu religion is considered divine destiny and command where it cannot be separated or get rid of it except by abandoning Hinduism itself. Thus, these classifications are attributed to God as an attribute of injustice and racism. Let us ask. Can God be a racist unjust? Is it permissible to attribute to God the status of injustice and racism? The answer is no. Almighty Allah is true injustice who has the most beautiful qualities that can never decrease. Therefore, Islam has called to purifying the Creator God from the status of injustice and racism. Also, he is not God to individuals and groups without others, to a nation without other nations or to some people without others. However, he is the exalted God of the worlds who can accept all of them, if they come to him. Believe in him and obey him. He forgives them, opens the doors of his mercy to them, places them in his paradise and pleases them. He is the highest true justice God that does not oppress any of his slaves at all. All in the sight of Allah are equal and no one is preferred over the other except by piety, good deeds which he seeks to get close to him and satisfy him and by believing in his God and Creator. According to what I have pointed to, it appears to us the wisdom of Islam's prohibition of racism and the elimination of discrimination in societies between different individuals and groups. Muslim, now that I have explained detailed answers to you, I would like to present some of the important questions and inherent answers to them, as follows. 1. Is not the exalted God the creator of human and other creatures? Is not Allah their protector and who alone has the control of everything in this universe? The answer is yes. 2. Is it not the exalted God alone, who blessed humans with his many countless bounties? The answer is yes. 3. Is not in the hands of Almighty God alone the reward and punishment? The response is yes. 
4. Is it permissible then to associate anyone with him in his divinity or worship other than him? The answer is no. Allah is Almighty God who has bestowed on man all the uncountable blessings. Not only is that but also reward and punishment are in his hand alone. For that, he deserves to be worshipped. 5. Which is closer to the clear mind. The belief that there are many gods, portraying the pictures of God in various images including dispersion, the worship of different gods such as the idols, stones and statues of different multiple gods plus other images of reverence, worship of the suns, planets, cows, various animals, trees as well as neglecting and insulting him or belief in the oneness of Almighty God, uniting people, their meeting on worship, praying to one God, purifying him from the shortcomings, defects, ugly acts of trivial, appreciating him and glorifying him? Answer, there is no doubt that the latter is closer to the explicit intellect without any opposition to it. 6. Which tend to pure instinct and clean soul. Belief in the multiplicity of gods which leads to a contradiction, the absence of a specific way in worship or belief in the oneness of Almighty God and uniting people on how to worship one God. Answer, there is no doubt that the tendency will be to believe in the oneness of Almighty Allah and then uniting people to worship one God in one way. After these questions and their answers, it is sufficient for you to know that if you return to the Hindu scriptures, you will find what is consistent with the origin of Islam such as a call to believe in Allah, the one God. Furthermore, there is in it not to have a partner to Allah and prohibition of portraying God's images and statues. I have explained to you a lot of places in Hindu books that illustrated them. Thus, this is in conformity with what Islam has said, Almighty God says. Say, O Messenger, he is Allah who is alone in being a deity. There is no deity except him. Say, he is Allah, who is, one. Alone, without another, indivisible with absolute and permanent unity and distinct from all else. The one and only true deity, unique in his essence, attributes and deeds. He is the master to whom belongs all sovereignty and perfect, beautiful qualities. The one to whom all creation turn to. Allah, the eternal refuge. He who is absolute, perfect, complete, essential, self-sufficient and sufficient to meet the needs of all creation. The one eternally and constantly required and sought, depended upon by all existence and to whom all matters will ultimately return. The one who did not give birth to anyone, nor did anyone give birth to him. So he has no offspring, may he be glorified, nor any parent. He neither begets nor is born nor does he have any equal from his creation. Nor is there to him any equivalent. Quran, Eklos, 112,1-4 Thus, it is clear that believing in the existence of other gods with Allah, taking their statues and worshipping them is contrary to what is stated in the books of Hinduism and Islam. In addition to the evangelization of Hindu books by the coming of the Prophet, Muhammad peace be upon him at the end of time as the messenger and the seal of all prophets and apostles. Question, Hindu, you told me during your talking that the Hindu books talked about the coming of the Prophet Muhammad in the last time as a seal for all the prophets and messengers. Are you sure of this and what is it? Answer, the Muslim, definitely, yes. It is in many places and I would like to explain. 1. Verily, Allah used to send his prophets and messengers in consecutive times to different nations and peoples. He sent them to their people only except the last message which was given to the prophet Muhammad. It was sent to all nations in every place and time for being the last one. Therefore, the prophet Muhammad is the seal of prophets and messengers. After that, if the previous books stated what was consistent with the Holy Quran's instructions, we would believe them. On the other hand, if they talked about what was contrary to the Quran's lesson, we would not believe them. However, whatever is not mentioned in the Quran or the Prophet's statements, we will not accept it as a truth or reject it as a false. A lot of clear explicit explanations about the coming of the Prophet Muhammad in the last time are available in Hindu's books such as the Good News by Nrakans in each of the Hindu's four books, Rick. Wade Yajur Wade Sam Wade Adara Wade. Also, the word of Thrishna which contains two words, the first, nar meaning a person and the second, ashansa meaning someone that is praised a lot. It is as if they mentioned this word as a gist that this chosen character for praise is among the human race. 
It is known that the name of the Prophet Muhammad was derived from Hamad, praise, means the one who was praised and lauded a lot. Also, it is known that the name Ahmed is another name of the Prophet peace be upon him and the synonym of the name Muhammad. It is also derived from Hamda. If there is no any good news about the Prophet Muhammad except this proclamation, it is sufficient as evidence for the sake of its clarity and frankness. Not only these but also there are many good news in places that give a description in Rakans. Rick Wade, Regved, Book, 1 Chapter, 106 Number, 4 Rick Wade, Regved, Book, 5 Chapter 5, Number, 2 2. An explanation of the characteristics of the last apostle for all the former ones as in Hindu's books where it is mentioned that he is the last Temprishi, the last messenger. Among the places that show the coming of the last messenger and his attributes, book, Kulki Purana Bab, 2 number, 15, 11, 7, 5, 4. The book mentions that his mother's name is Sunti. This word in Sanskrit means peace and security. It is known that the mother of the Prophet Muhammad is called safe means peace and security. The book says that the name of his father is Washu Yas and the word Washu means God and the word Yas means Abdul. That is his name is Abdullah and this is the name of the father of the Prophet Muhammad. The book states that it is born in a country of peace and security. It is known that the country where the Prophet Muhammad was born is Makkah. The book states that it will be a universal missionary and this is identical to how Allah has described his last messenger Muhammad in the Holy Quran he says. O Prophet, indeed we have sent you as a witness, a bringer of good tidings and a warner. Surat al-Azab, verse 45. It also mentions that he will receive the revelation on Mount and it happens so on the Mount of Light. In addition, it says that he will migrate to the north and then return and it is known that the Prophet Muhammad migrated from Mecca to Medina and then came back to it again on the day of the conquest. Thus, it is clear that these good tidings are the emblems of the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him- 3. In many places, the Prophet Muhammad has been mentioned by another name Ahmed means someone that is praised such as in Rejvita, Book, 8 Part, 6 Number. 10. And other places giving the tidings of the coming of the Prophet Muhammad in the last time as the last messenger. Question, Hindu, so, what are the attributes of God in Islam? Answer, Muslim, Islam called to believing in the goodness, beauty and greatness of the attributes of Almighty Allah. All these qualities are nice, perfect, and great without any diminution. It is only him, who has no partner, that deserves them. Creating, bringing to life and protecting are all in his hand. He is alone who has to act in all things. He is Almighty Allah. Among the attributes of Almighty Allah are They attribute eternal, it means that he is the first who has nothing before him and the last who has nothing after him. He neither overlooks nor sleeps. He is the living that will never die. If places and times finish, he will not dismiss because he is the creator of both. They attribute power, it means that Almighty God is the owner of absolute power and that he is the one who is capable of doing everything. If he wants anything, he will say to it be and it will be. The effects which are indicative of the transcendence of the power of God are uncountable. Among them is the admirable creation of the universe, its assets and creatures including the human being and the creativity in the creation of spirit, mind, heart and complex internal systems and so on. The attribute knowledge, it means that he is all-knowing and his knowledge is wide, complete and surrounding everything such as place and time, past, present, future. He is Almighty God Creator who brought everything to the existence from nothing. The attribute wisdom, it means that he is wise and that his wisdom is comprehensive and complete. The attribute will, it means that he does his will and wants in the framework of his virtue and justice depending on the capacity of his knowledge, perfection of his wisdom and greatness. The attribute forgiveness, mercy and generosity. It means that he loves forgiveness, mercy and generosity and forgives the sins of his slaves and their shortcomings if they repent to him believe in him and obey his orders. He blesses them, honors them by his grace and puts them in his paradise where therein is a great permanent stable bliss. The attribute truth and justice, they mean that he loves the truth and justice. He does not oppress his slaves or discriminate among them at all. Therefore, there is no difference between any of the human races, since no one is favored over anyone in the sight of Allah except with faith, piety, and good deeds. Also, no one can bear the error of another, even if he is his father or his mother.
Every person is responsible for himself and whoever does an atom of a good deed will find his reward and compensation on the day of resurrection, the day when people will be raised up after their deaths to hold them accountable for their deeds in this world and to reimburse them. On the other hand, whoever does an atom of evil will be held accountable as well. The attribute peace, he loves peace and orders his slaves to establish it and its causes on the earth. Furthermore, he prohibits injustice and tyranny for them so that they can have peace and security. Here we may recognize the wisdom that greeting in Islam is peace, that is the first person should say, peace be upon you, and the second one should reply with peace be upon you. Two, so that you feel safety and security. Islam has shown that nothing is like him in his perfection, beauty, majesty, greatness, strength, absolute power, wide knowledge and perfect wisdom and other attributes. Question, Hinduism, why should we believe in the Holy Quran as the last of the heavenly books? Answer, the Muslim, it is because the Holy Quran includes what supports its truthfulness and sanctity as follows. 1. It contains the clean belief in Almighty Allah as mentioned previously and briefly and the pure call including guiding worships which lead to self-sufficiency. Ascendancy and purifying oneself from the inferior manners. It also has the sound laws, the noble teachings and the rational guidelines which let the life of mankind be on Allah's path. It solves all the problems with the beauty of its style, organizing, great rhetoric, the accuracy of the words, comprehensiveness and splendor in a way that people cannot bring a chapter like it. Two, the Holy Quran and the Prophet's hadiths have pointed to amazing scientific facts, in heaven, earth, mountains, seas, man, animals, birds and plants, especially in the case of creation since more than 1,400 years ago, at a time when no one had any knowledge about it. Then, the modern science came with its advanced techniques to discover its authenticity and credibility. Therefore, it confirmed the fact that this book, the Holy Quran, is the complete word of Almighty Allah. Examples of these scientific facts related to the issue of creation such as the origin of the universe and how God created the heavens and the earth as well as the embryo and its stages of development. Example 1, Almighty Allah says, Have those who disbelieved not considered that the heavens and the earth were a joint entity, and we separated them and made from water every living thing? Then will they not believe? Surat al Anbiya, verse 2130. Do those who disbelieved in Allah not know that the heavens and the earth were joined without any gap in between that rain should come down from it, then I split them apart? And I made every animal and plant from the water that comes down from the sky. Do they not consider this and believe in Allah alone? Surat al Anbiya, verse 2130. The meaning of Kanata Ratkan are connected, that is, the heavens and the earth were linked, not divergent. The meaning of Fafatak Nahuma, separated them, that is, we separated the sky and the earth after they were linked. The Quranic gracious verse speaks about the God's creation of the heavens and the earth and the beginning of his creation. It calls to contemplating about the creativity in his creation and how this acclaimed universe began to recognize its creator and believe in him, his great qualities and his unlimited power. The Quranic verse tells us that the heavens and the earth were at first connected as one thing as in his word, they were joined and then they were detached as in his word they were separated. The modern science has discovered the truth of what was told by the Quranic verse such as the surprising scientific fact that the scientists have discovered in this modern age. Hence, they have developed the theory of the Great Explosion, the prevailing theory in this modern era, after the discovery of the expansion and extension of the universe continuously. Also, the theory of the Great Explosion says that as long as the universe to the day diverges, it must have been close one day. Moreover, if we imagine that these galaxies are moving in the opposite direction to the direction of their divergence today, that is to say, they move close together. Therefore they will become one segment adhering to one another as in the word of Allah they were linked and equal to the size of the galaxies made for them. Physicists say, the closer these galaxies come from each other and the more their mass increases, the more gravitational they become then the closeness increases as in Allah's statement they were linked. The more spaces between the stars forming the galaxies disappear and the gravitational pressure increases on the stars themselves. That is how the pressure will continue until the constituent material of the universe becomes in the size of the atom. And then the pressure will continue till this material becomes the smallest possible, and then it exploded as in the word of God then we separated them. The parts of this material which has great pressure and tremendous energy spread in the form of radiation. After that, it gradually cooled down till this seen universe was formed in the heavens and the earth. 
how accurate are the words of the Quran and its rhetoric? And on what does that indicate? There is no doubt that all of this evidence indicates the credibility of the Holy Quran and that it was revealed by Allah to his trustworthy Prophet, the seal of the Prophets and Messengers. Example 2, Allah says, Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke. Surat Fusilat, verse 11. Then Allah, may he be glorified, resolved to create the sky at a time when it was smoke, saying to it and the earth, Submit to my command willingly or be forced, it has to be one of the two. They said, We come willingly, O our Lord. We have no wish except your wish. Surat Fusilat, verse 11. The verse indicates that the sky at the beginning of its creation was created by blessed and exalted Allah as smoke. The modern science has been able to portray the first cosmic smoke resulting from the process of the Big Bang at the beginning of the creation of the universe. They found archaeological remains on the edges of the perceived part of the universe which confirms that the sky at the beginning was created by Allah and it was smoke as in his word. Then he directed himself to the heaven while it was smoke. How accurate are the words of the Quran and its rhetoric? And on what does that indicate? Example 3, he says, and, mention, when your Lord took from the children of Adam, from their loins, their descendants, and made them testify of themselves. Surat al-Araf, verse 172. Mention, O Muhammad, when your Lord took from the loins of the children of Adam their descendants and had them acknowledge, bearing witness to his lordship. Making it part of their innate nature to acknowledge that he created them and that he is their Lord. He said to them, Am I not your Lord? And they replied, Yes, we bear witness. Allah said, I asked you this question so that you would not deny the proofs of Allah on the day of judgment, saying that you did not have any knowledge of it. Lest you might say that your ancestors were the ones who broke the promise, taking others as partners with Allah, and that you were just following them. In this way, you would say, O oh our Lord. Will you destroy us for what our ancestors did, making our actions worthless because of taking others as partners with you? Indeed we carry no sin because we were just following our ancestors and had no knowledge. So just as I made clear the signs and evidences for the previous nations, I make clear the lessons for these people, Quraysh, so that they might repent from worshipping others as partners with Allah to believing in Him alone and worshipping Him alone. As they had agreed aforetime before they broke their promise. Surat al-Araf, verse 172 to 174. The Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him says, Verily, Allah took a covenant from Adam's back and brought out from his spine all descendants he created. It is narrated by an Asahi. The previous verse, as well as the Prophet's hadith, shows that all the offspring of Adam, the first father of all human beings and the first one created by God, were in his spine at the moment of his creation. The modern science has discovered the so-called chromosomes in addition to the discovery of the role of the genetic chromosome in embryology. Thus, it has been proven to the embryologists that the creation of man is predetermined in the sperm of both his father and mother and that this estimate extends through the past centuries, distant past, to contact the genetic codes of parents and grandparents until it reaches Adam peace be upon him dash. This genetic code is programmed with great accuracy and folded into the nucleus of the living cell of the reproductive cells. This means that each of the sons of Adam was present in the genetic code of his father Adam at the moment of his creation, Scientific Miracles in the Prophetic Sunnah, Part 3, by Zaglal al -Najjar. Then, the compatibility of what is mentioned in this Quranic verse and the prophetic hadith is clear. The content of their references has been discussed at a previous point with the discoveries that the modern science has reached. Example 4, Allah says, Does man think that he will be left neglected? Had he not been a sperm from semen emitted? Surat al qiyamah verse 36 to 37. Does man think that Allah will leave him neglected without imposing any laws on him? Was this human being one day not a drop of sperm spilt into the womb? Thereafter, he was a piece of coagulated blood. Then Allah created him and made his form proportionate. Then he made his species into two types, male and female? Is not the one who created man from a drop, then a clot, able to give life once again to the dead for the reckoning and recompense? Indeed, he is able to do so. Surat al qiyamah verse 36-37 The meaning of does man think that he will be left neglected? 
Does a person think he will be ignored without being assigned to perform orders from Allah or he will be neglected without accountability or compensation, reward or punishment, for his obedience or disobedience to the commands of Allah? The answer is that the person will not be left neglected unless he is assigned and ordered to execute commands from Allah and will not be left with no account and no reward for his obedience or disobedience to the commands of Allah. He will be asked and will be held accountable and rewarded for all. He who does an atom of good will get its reward and whoever does a wit of evil will be held accountable. The meaning of sperm, it is less than semen and it is the cause of procreation of men and women. The meaning of produced sperm, water that is the cause of reproduction and the creation of the fetus. That is, the human being was the first to be created from one sperm, very small in size, including semen that is the cause of reproduction and that contains many sperms. The Quranic verse is identical to what modern science has proven. The verse indicates that the embryo was formed from one sperm, as it is often, which is contained in semen, as God says sperm, which refers to individuals, not to plural. The sperm does not contain all semen while the latter contains millions of the formal, but the term sperm is not used in a plural form in the Quran because it is only one that vaccinates a female egg. This is the selected egg among the thousands of its types contained in the ovary so that it can be vaccinated by sperm. After that, the compatibility is clear between what this Quranic noble verse referred to and discoveries that have been reached by the modern science, which demonstrated the accuracy of the words of the Quran, its rhetoric and conformity.